So we're back to talk about multi-user admin. Again, why? Different management domains, technology or geography, right? So geography, you could use device groups, but if you want to do technology, maybe you want to restrict access to the specific IMC services like wireless management or user access management or network traffic analysis or MPLS or APM or any of the various modules that you have access to within your IMC server. Right, and you want to give them different levels of responsibility. And as well, we also it's also nice to have a, just a per user interface. So we're going to look at all those things today to extend on the last video we did on using device groups only to segment out that responsibility. Let's take a look. So here we are on the HP IMC 7.1 interface. Right, so IMC's got a lot of services, especially if you start adding in a lot of the different add-on modules. We have NTA, we have wireless management, we have APM, we've got all these different configuration management, compliance center, all these different things that maybe you need access to all of them and then again maybe you don't. Maybe only specific users need access to these functions, right? So one of the ways that we can do that is by using um, a, a function feature within IMC called operator groups. And operator groups allows us to segment out what is displayed in the interface. Right, so we've got device groups as well which allows us to control what we have access to, which devices we can do things to, but operator groups gives us what we can actually access. So in the example today, we're going to create a operator group and device group for someone who would, their only job in life, their only task is to do wireless management. So we're going to create a device group called wireless, and then we're going to put in the description. Again, descriptions are critically important. May not seem like a big deal now, may seem like it's going to take you a couple extra seconds. You will thank me in the long run by getting into this habit. So now that we've created the wireless group, we're going to add devices to that group, right? So we're going to go add in, um, in this case, a very simple wireless group. We could use the same concept that we had um, within the adding custom automatically populating those device groups through those variables, right? So go see the other video. In this case, we're just going to do it really simply. We're going to do it manually. We're going to scroll down to the bottom here, and we're going to make sure we get the HP 830 Unified Wired and Wireless Switch. Uh, which is actually a single physical box, but it's got two different personalities from a management standpoint. It's got a wireless side and a switch side. So we're going to add those two in here. Now we've got this device group set up with only those two devices in it. So now if we go over to custom views, we can create a custom view as well that only has those devices in it. Again, the privileges are assigned around device groups, custom views, what you can see, device groups, um, which devices you can apply these functions to and then again the operator group is going to be what can we actually do so we're going to go create this custom view designated device type is a way to do this and we'll see if I can get this right off the uh, off the bat so we're going to do um, just do a quick search for 830 in here filter that out query down to the bottom I'm going to be looking for that HP 830 and we'll see if I can pick the right one uh, this is I'm going to do this on the fly, um, 83024PLSW, we're going to grab those two guys there, um, hope I've got the right ones, and I'm going to click OK, and we're going to see what happens here. And again, this is, this is one of those times when, um, you know, don't do things this way in the real world. Plan it out, figure out how it's going to work. All right, we're going to go look at the wireless view. Oh, that says unmanaged, so seeing that this is unmanaged, I now know that those devices maybe I got the wrong personality in there for that that um, automatically population piece. So again, doesn't really matter in my case. I'm going to go in and add these in automatically. Uh, go down, find the 830, find the switch, click OK. There we go. Now we have a device group and a custom view defined. So the next step is to go and create the operator group. So we're going to go to System. operator management and operator group so again like I said the operator group is the way to control what features and functions within IMC that you're going to be able to actually access as an operator so we're gonna create a group here for wireless operators and then the privilege is always going to be defined on the three system defaults which is admin maintainer and viewer so again admin absolute rights on of everything on the system um, maintainer, on the other hand, is you can do stuff, but you don't have any of the kind of core um, administrative rights that allows you to make a whole bunch of changes to the system. See, you know, that one gets to see everything, right? So we're going to go through now, and 
if you look at this, these are different functions within IMC that a user may be able to access. So I'm going to create a user here, and I'm going to say that this guy here has most of the core platforms. I don't need the Van SDN Manager, right? I don't need APM. Uh, I may or may not want the Guest Access Manager, right? ACL Management, yeah, I want that one. General Configuration Management, VLAN Management, User Access Manager, right? That's the, um, the Radius portion, the BYOD stuff, Syslog. So I'm going to give him this particular, uh, him or her, user, access to a bunch of different things. But I'm going to restrict some of them out as well, right? So virtual resource management, he doesn't get um, APM, NTA, right? I've now created this wireless operator group, right? Oh, look at that. I broke my own rule. I didn't do the description. Again, always do the description. Group for, um, operator group for wireless network operators. There we go. Successful. Description's in there. Awesome. So now we have this data privilege configure as well. So the, the I'm not going to go through all this stuff today, but it gives you an idea of there's a, using these operator groups, you can kind of create this mass privilege model and assign it to this group and multiple operators if you have a lot of operators. And you can control who has access to different performance views, to specific report templates, to quick reports, to rights to schedule reports. All these kinds of things can be controlled. Uh, just so that you have an idea of, of what else is there beyond what I'm showing you today. So now we're going to go and create a specific operator. So system operator, operator, and we're going to click on the add button. We're going to type in a user account here. We'll call this Mary. And we're going to put in a password, confirm password. And the operator group, in this case, we're going to take that and go to the wireless operator group that we just created. Put in the description here. And then we're going to go and change the manage groups um, to be able to look at the device groups, right? So again, we're going to get that wireless device group. And then we have the define manageable custom views. So we're going to look at that as well. So you can see uh, wireless view is here. And we'll leave the WAN also checked here just to show you what that's going to look like as opposed to the, the last video. So if you give access to the WAN custom view, but you don't have access to any of the devices inside it, well, that's going to give you an empty view, right? So as well, the other thing we have here is some extended privileges that are wireless specific. In our case, um, I really don't care. I'm not going to segment this out. This uh, Mary user is going to be responsible for um, all the wireless, not just specific fit AP groups or specific level one location views. So now that we've got all that defined, again, we're good to go. Excellent. We'll review all our settings, wireless operator group, description. We're going to click OK. Operator Mary is successfully created. So now we're going to go, and we're in as the admin right now, right? Again, you can look at all the different um, you know, wireless, uh, van SDN, traffic analysis all of those different um, services that we have within IMC that are currently accessible and installed on the system. But when I log out of the admin and I log back in as Mary, we're going to see how this changes the interface. So now that Mary is logged in here, you can see that she's actually logged in as Mary up here at the top right hand corner. And as you would expect, because she's only got access to the, the wireless, the HP Unified Wired and Wireless 830 switch, wireless combo, one wireless device, one switch, right? It's what we'd expect to see. So the other thing to notice is if you look at the interface, the virtual networking is missing, the APM is missing, application, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff, the SDN manager, the NTA, all of that is now missing from the interface. And that's because we restricted that out using that operator group function. Whereas Mary, as the wireless, um, network operator here. She has access to all the functions that she needs to actually do her job, right? So she's, she's got access to all of that um, WSM functions. She can go in, she can see the client list. And again, if I wanted to have multiple um, wireless users, maybe a different wireless user per branch, I could have also restricted this out for her by looking at this from different device groups, right? So again, she's got all that great information. Um, she can do everything, you know, look at uh, RSSI strength, you know, who's, 
who is logged in where. It's all there. So just to, as another proof point to give you an idea of how, how this gets affected by the device groups is if we go now into traditional IMC platform and, and ICC, the Config Center, you're now going to see that she's only got access to those two devices, right? So even though that the system is backing up and still managing all the other devices that IMC knows about globally, you would have to log in with an account to actually see those. So the other nice thing about being this multi-user system is every individual operator has their own home page. So in this case, we're going to now set up a home page for Mary to help her do her job as a wireless administrator. So we're going to open up the widgets here, just clicking on that little plus button to get into the ad, and we're going to go over to the WLAN section. So we can really, Mary can have whatever widget she wants from any of the modules she has access to. Again, this is going to be dependent on that operator group function. But in this particular case, we want to make an interface that is interesting for Mary. So, you know, we're going to put on, you know, the AC widget, the FitAP widget, SSID rate trend graph right um SID based client count right so these are all the things and really whatever is of interest to Mary specifically in this kind of a portal dashboard um, that lets her do her job more effectively right so she can really grab any of these that she wants and then this is her particular interface to the system right so this is supposed to allow her to do her job more effectively um, maybe want to add on online user client usage right maybe top five service per user count right there's, there's a bunch of different things that we can have here. Uh, UAM licenses, right? So we can figure out, um, am I going to be hitting my licensing count when I look at it from a BYOD standpoint, which is licensed by users, right? So this allows us to ensure that you've got some capacity planning. You've got all this different information, um, client count usage. So, right, lots of good information specifically for Mary, the wireless network operator. So the last thing here I wanted to point out is that we've still got that WAN custom view, right? So we've got access to the custom view, but if you don't have access to the devices in the custom view, then you're not going to see much at all, right? So in the last example, we're going to set up one operator group that I've actually done with a few customers that shows you really how restrictive you can get when using operator groups. So in this case, we're going to create a operator group for a help desk person who the only thing they want to know is where is a device connected in the network, right? And we all know that we can use the real time location underneath the terminal access to be able to do that. We can query for IP address or MAC address and figure out which switch and which port on which switch that that particular IP address is currently located in. So I'm going to create a viewer account here based on the viewer privilege level, which means read only and I'm going to deselect all. And now I'm going to go in and I am going to find the real time location, right? So after a little bit of time, you're gonna, you're gonna figure this stuff out a little more, but I will give you guys a hint. It's in resource management, because again, top of the screen, resource management, right? Terminal access, real time location. So we're gonna check that checkbox, and then we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and we're gonna say, okay. So now we have the RTL operator group, description is in there. And now we're gonna create a operator and give them access to the RTL group. So in this case, I'm gonna use the operator group functionality to limit what they can do, but I'm not gonna use the device group. So I'm gonna say, just call this Ted. Ted the temp, right? I'm gonna give him a password. And in the operator group, I am going to give him that RTL operator group. So again, I'm not going to worry about the manage group. So I'm going to say he can have access to whatever he wants because he needs to know where a, a, a user is. If I wanted to, I could restrict that using the device groups, right? The defined manageable groups. Don't care about the WSM stuff either, right? We can leave all this stuff alone because he actually doesn't get to see any of the WSM features. And now we're going to click OK. There we go. Operator Ted has been successfully created. Right? Look at all these things that we have access to as admin, and now let's take a look and see what happens when we log out and log back in as Ted. Ted's username, Ted's password, login button, and look at that. Nothing on the home page because he doesn't have access to any of those widgets. And we go across the top here, operator management, the only thing he has is modify password. 
right? So some of these widgets are, are for things that are going to be internal to IMC system. So there is still a, a limited amount of things that he might have for the widgets, but for all intents and purposes, he can't do anything to any devices at all in the system. He's got none of the services that actually would change anything. All he can do is go in and put in an IP address and figure out where a device is in the network. So because the device group has not restricted the privileges, he's going to be able to still find where these things are. But the only function he has is real-time location. And with that, we'll close this up. It gives you guys a really good idea of, of how device groups and operator groups go together and how these things can be used to create a multi-user admin system using HP's Intelligent Management Center. See you guys next time on the next Intelligent Management Tutorial.